Okay, this is kind of the generic integrated furnace control, circuit board, control board, brain board, whatever you want to call the silly thing. Uh, pretty much controls everything in these furnaces. Any of these furnaces built after all oh, the early 90s, this one was built in 93, uh, they will all unlike, most likely have one of these things in it. So troubleshooting it, you know, you can't actually troubleshoot a board. All you can do is go by the blinking codes. Now, this one's got a little light. Now, these things are, you know, they're all different. They have different codes. Some of them will tell you if a part's failed. Some of them just tell you uh, where to look. Uh, but this status code, there should be a uh, uh, key for that on one of the furnace panels. Pretty much tells you, sometimes it'll tell you if the board is bad. Uh, but other than that, it's going to tell you, I got a limit switch problem, I got a um, a flame safety problem. I have a pressure switch problem. One of those things is probably going to tell you. Uh, and the boards themselves, you know, they're really not made to be repaired. That said, I do occasionally repair these boards. Uh, before we get into repair, I want you to take a look. We've got an automotive type fuse there. If you've got no blinking light at all and you do have power to the furnace, make sure that fuse isn't blown. Uh, kind of a look around at these things. This is your processor. Uh, this part here is all solid state and there's really not much you can do with it. Uh, I have in the past, uh, notice where we have these resistors uh, placed over a uh, open spot and it's a little bit dark around them. The dark is normal. Uh, sometimes they get hot enough that they will melt the solder here. And in that case, there's no reason you can't repair those things. You can you can solder them. Uh, all these areas here, there's probably not much you can do that's all electronic and I'd be a little bit antsy about dealing with any of that because there is a flame safety failure problem. So, uh, but the ones I would look at, I'm going to turn this board over, the black things are relays. Those are electromechanical relays. They turn on the fan, they turn on the inducer, uh, they turn on the hot surface igniter. They can wear out. They're really not replaceable. I suppose if you could find one that was similar to it, you could put it on. But what I have actually done is, you see these heavy traces? They make these heavy traces here because they actually have to draw a fair amount of power through them. They could be drawing up to five, six amps, maybe more, depending on the equipment. So they make those traces heavier. But I have seen, especially where the solder joints are, where these will uh, not make contact. And you can take a solder gun or a little soldering iron and solder those up, uh, just like you do with these resistors. Uh, nothing wrong with that. A lot of times that problem happens here in these terminals. You look on this side, this is where hot surface igniter is coming in, inducer is coming in because we've got, I don't know if you can see that too well. These things are usually marked in some way. Uh, inducer, IND, and HSI for hot surface igniter. Uh, those, uh, these two terminals here, if you look on the other side, you notice they don't, they don't go any place. They're just park terminals for extra uh, speeds on the motor, because you can select whatever speed you want to run. And so those are just park poised places so you could park them. Uh, here we've got, let's see, cool and heat. 
But other than that, you know, don't get too rambunctious in these boards. Uh, you might be able to save somebody some money. However, uh, be really careful about that. If there, uh, if you were to deal with any of the parts that involved with that are involved with flame safety, then uh, uh, you may not have a safe furnace. So uh, don't try to fool with any of that. One last thing: if this board has been wet, every manufacturer I have. Uh, Scene says throw it away. Now that's a manufacturer's instruction. If the manufacturer's instructions say throw the board away if it's been wet, throw the board away. I don't care if it works or not. If it's been in a flood, if there's been you know water nearby it enough to splash on it, the, uh, the manufacturer is going to tell you to throw it away. And most of them don't work. Most of them fail. Uh, there will be something happens in them that will fail. So uh, just be real careful about doing any kind of repairs in these boards. This stuff here, maybe, you know, because that's that's all uh, high voltage and 24 volt uh, wires there. But don't get into any of the electronics other than maybe fixing the solder joint on a resistor. So that's the board. Uh, it usually tells you where the problem is, and it uh, usually has some sort of blinking code that if it has failed. Now, certainly, if the if you come onto this board and it's not working, and you have eliminated all other problems, it's just not doing anything. Uh, maybe not even blinking a code, or maybe just blinking a, a the status light for no call for heat. And you've eliminated everything else. You know, limit switches. Limit switch should turn on the fan anyway, so the fan should be running. Flame safety control. Uh, you should be able to recycle it and get it to uh, try again. Uh, those sort of things. Uh, then you're going to have to replace the board. And I got. I don't have a problem with anybody just replacing the board, regardless of what the problem is. It, unless you really know what you're doing, I wouldn't fool with them. Okay.